In partnership with Redpoint Ventures, we are at NASDAQ's market site celebrating the Redpoint Infrared 100 list. My name is Christina Ianian, and joining me today is CEO of WeV8, Bob Fenlaut. Bob, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, vector databases like WeV8 were really born as a new form of core infrastructure in the wake of AI and machine learning. To start us off, can you tell our viewers what a vector database is and how WeV8 plays into that? Yeah, sure. So um, when we look at infrastructure and databases, they um, uh, they store information like numbers and text and all those no and all those kind of things, right? Um, but it actually turned out like in the wake of AI, which was like around 2014, 2015, when there was like this new bump, um, a new, I mean, a very obscure data type became very important, and that's what we call vector embeddings. And what they actually do is that they try to place data in relation to each other in a space. So, um, but databases that were good at dealing with that kind of information, they didn't really exist. So um, a lot of information was coming literally from research papers, and there was an opportunity where we thought, like, hey, wait a second, we can turn this into a new product. Because if everybody's going to adopt AI, back then that was a big if, if everybody's going to adopt AI, then we believe that there's room in the market for purpose-built technology to deal with these vector embeddings coming from these AI models. You were really an early mover. You saw the opportunity, and you ran after it to find a solution. Well, I guess so, yeah. So it's like, I always, the, the way that I always like to describe it is the, uh, I call it the magic of machine learning. And what I mean with that is that everybody who has ever played with these models, and that's now, of course, you know, very easy to do, uh, it's nice. It's like, um, um, it, it feels that you're having like an interaction over conversation. And back in the day, we could already see that. That was like really early days, mm -hmm. but you could already see where that was going. So, you know, just putting one-on-one -on -one together, just, you know, made me conclude, hey, I think that there's an opportunity. You've also mentioned in past interviews and writings that these AI-enabled products are stateless, and WeV8 brings state into them. How does WeV8 bring state into these stateless products? Yes, so, so um, the, 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 the reason I started to use uh, terminology like uh, state and something being stateless, that's, it's a technological term, but it, if I explain it kind of, I guess it, got, it makes sense. So some forms of technology that we have are stateless. So, an example of that is an MP3 file. So if you listen to the MP3 file and you send it to me and I listen to it, then uh, we listen to the same music, but it's stateless. Uh, there's also technology that's stateful. So for example, if you take a, a word, right? So if you write a Word document, then it saves the state of what you wrote in the document. So you can write something, I can write something, but it's different. Now, turns out that these machine learning models, these AI models, they are uh, stateless. So that means we train them on a set of data, and then the knowledge that's contained in them, that just stops, right? It's stateless. So everybody who played around with these models sometimes uh, gets a response where it says like, well, I was trained on data from 2021, so you know, I don't have any more knowledge than that. And what these vector databases do, and there's a technical term for, them, for it, it's like, um, uh, it's called retrieval augmented generation, it's a very fancy term, but what it does is that it gives state to these models. So now if you're a business or, or, or an individual user or whomever you are, but you have your own data, you can real time inject that in the model. So now these AI models, they get state, they become stateful and they, you can interact with them based on your own data. So that's where that harmony between AI and the vector databases, where that comes from. Wow, and now ChatGPT has really triggered a seismic shift in the wake of AI. How does WeV8 play into this? And what's your outlook on this industry and the future of this industry? Yes, so um, as, I, as, I, as we yeah, mentioned, uh, as I mentioned before, so uh, we started working on this, you know, way back, right? So 2016, 17, we started to work on this. And before uh, the boom. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so and there was a lot of interest from, from, from developers. So, you know, we, maybe we can build better search systems, better recommendation systems. Um, but the thing was, there was not really like a business critical insight. And um, uh, we could give demos, we could give presentations, all these things, and developers got it. But you know, on a business level, people were still like, yeah, so how do I use this again? And uh, the big change, in my opinion, that came, like um, I always say, like there's like a pre-chat GPT and a post-chat GPT era, is that all of a sudden, um, eyes were opened. People were like, oh, wait a second. This, this might eat you know, our lunch as a business. <laughs> we need to adopt this ASAP. And that is the, the big shift. So it, it, it opened 
you know, people's eyes for, um, hey, this actually can have a huge impact on my business. And nobody knew where that would be coming from. It turned out that it was a, you know, just a, a chat application. And everyone can build onto it. Now, WeV8 is open source, so you're really creating a community of developers and really uh, propelling that knowledge exchange and that knowledge share. What does the open source go-to-market strategy look like? Yeah, so um, uh, this is a question I, I get a lot, right? So people say, okay, so it's, it's open source, so you know, how do you make money? How does that work? So first of all, we need to understand what the role of open source is, right? So the role of open source um, is that you have an interaction with a community. So you create something and you think that people, you know, that it will benefit certain people and certain use cases, but people give you feedback or they start to help you or those kind of things. And that is something that you incorporate in the product. So certain features that we have, certain um, uh, modules that we have, all those kind of things that are created because we get that feedback from the community. And if you're open source, you're super transparent. So everybody can see, oh, this is what they're working on, this is what they're doing. So what that starts to do is that kind of drive starts to drive usage. Now, and the idea of the go-to-market motion is that the value that you create for businesses with that technology at some point, I mean, if it's a, a proof of concept or people just kicking tires, then it's fine, you know, you try open source. But if you go into production, and that's a production is an important word here, it's like, then certain different rules start, you know, are applied because people want certain guarantees, certain securities, those kind of things. And that is what you can sell on top of um, open source technology. So it starts with this, how we call that a, a, a bottom-up motion. So bottom-up, I mean, through the developers in an organization, they adopt and then you know get deployed inside an organization. So that's how that motion works. At the same time, you're growing alongside your clients yes. through this. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is that is super important because one thing that's very important to to bear in mind is that that eye-opening moment that happened that we just discussed. Everybody is now figuring out how what are we going to do, right? How are we going to? So we see we see from from startups all the way to large enterprises having these. These, these, these uh, large language model teams, these AI teams, or however they call them, and they're trying everything out and they're building, and now we see like the first signs of them going to production. And, um, and then all these needs from just very traditional you know, software are starting to play a role uh, again. That must be so rewarding to see, and the fact that you were on the forefront of it back in 2016. Oh, yes it is, and it's like I, I'm still I'm still, um, uh, uh, I mean, uh, look at me now, right? So I'm sitting here at NASDAQ talking <laughs> about vector databases. So it's like, it's amazing to see what's, uh, what's happening. That's yeah. incredible. The sky is the limit. What's next for Weviate? So they're like, um, the thing that I'm very, very excited about is um, we often talk about large language models. So the second L in the abbreviation, LM, language. Um, but actually, there's a lot of work happening in something we call a multimodal. And that means that it just doesn't matter anymore. So you can get text, text in, text out, image in, image out, audio in, uh, audio out. So whatever we as humans, um, um, you know, observe in the in the world, that's now these models start to do that as well. And that is something that I'm very, very, very excited uh, about. Plus, I'm also, of course, very happen that, uh, happy that the whole um, the whole open source movement, right? So um, there's so much innovation happening. It's literally every week there's something new. It's it's insane how fast it's going. So, um, uh, the, you know, uh, how businesses use this, that's going to look completely different from today to like, I would I wanted to say six months, but I, I can even say like three months from now. It's Absolutely. going very fast. It's, it's a very complex space, but it's so dynamic. And like you were saying, everything is changing so fast. So it must be so rewarding being a part of that journey. Absolutely. However, that said, though, it's, it's new. So the, the, the AI is like, it's really a new paradigm. That said, you know, if, especially from from a, from a business perspective, certain um, patterns just you know start to reemerge. So you go like, okay, so it's, it's becoming more and more clear how things are reemerge, uh, are, are how things are emerging based on you know lessons from the past. It's just the fact that the AI models are a complete new uh, new paradigm in the in the space. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. We are so excited to continue following your journey and look forward to having you back at Nasdaq soon. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Bob.